What's up, fam? Welcome, welcome. We are so, so grateful to have you all here. My name is Ruben. I use he, they pronouns. I am honored to serve as your MC for today's uh, momentous occasion. I want to make sure that everybody is in the right place. This is a family space, this is a community space. This is our 2021 annual 9th and 10th graders Puente Motivational Conference. We have the honor of being the generation hosted by UC Berkeley. It's been years and years since UC Berkeley had the privilege of hosting our annual Puente Motivational Conference. We're so grateful to be here with you all. This is specifically a space for a ninth and 10th graders and your families, whoever's listening or watching. I don't know if you're with your parents, your siblings, your partners, your friends, whoever's around you. Hopefully everybody is safe in these moments. And we're gonna go ahead and kick off today's conversation. Uh, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Please make sure that you're taking care of yourselves. We have a 90-minute program, a 90-minute journey. We are excited to make this a highlight of your year. This is a space of community, movement building, and energizing ourselves to honor the dreams of our ancestors, the aspiration of our current generations, and the vision for our future. We are kicking today off with three incredible community leaders who come from the communities that we come from and are now major university leaders themselves. So before we pass the mic to them and we feature them on screen for you all, I wanna share with you a little bit about who they are so you know the significance of them being with us today. First and foremost, we have uh, Professor Oscar Dubon Jr who was appointed as UC Berkeley's Vice Chancellor for Equity and Inclusion in 2017. He leads campus-wide efforts through the Division of Equity and Inclusion to foster belonging among all members of the campus community, particularly those who have been marginalized, excluded, or unwelcomed. Working with colleagues from the Division of Equity and Inclusion, campus partners, and the broader university community, Oscar pursues programs and services that lead to academic access and success for students. They enable pathways to leadership and advancement for faculty and staff and build equitable structures to close opportunity gaps for our marginalized groups. In doing so, he envisions a campus where all Berkeley students, faculty, staff feel welcomed, valued, and supported. Now, it's important for us to lift the fact that Oscar, who is our current Vice Chancellor of Equity and Inclusion, is a professor. This is a brilliant man. And this professor's specialty is material science and engineering, as well as faculty scientists at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. He received a BS from UCLA in 1989, an MS and PhD from Berkeley in 92 and 96. Oh my goodness, great years, great music back in the day. After postdoctoral positions at Berkeley and Harvard University, he joined the Berkeley faculty in the year 2000. That's gonna be our first speaker today. Now, immediately afterwards, after Oscar finishes, we're gonna pass the mic and we're gonna lift Femi, Femi, he is the newly appointed Associate Vice Chancellor of Enrollment Management and the Dean of Undergraduate Admissions. In this former position as Assistant Vice Chancellor and Director of Undergraduate Admission at UC Berkeley, he provided vision, strategy, and leadership in the recruitment and evaluation of California's public flagship. Prior to his arrival, Femi served as the Assistant Dean of Diversity Outreach at Stanford University, where he provided vision and leadership for undergraduate admissions outreach initiatives targeting LGBT plus, undocumented, disadvantaged, and first-generation students. He has developed partnerships with national associations, foundations, and organizations to search out the nation's most promising students, such as yourselves who are here with us today, especially those from underrepresented backgrounds in higher education. In addition to his domestic work with diversity, Femi revamped and increased outreach initiatives to students and educators throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. 
Femi has a master's of science in communication from Ithaca College and a bachelor's of science in journalism and public relations from Mansfield University of Pennsylvania. As a first generation Nigerian American, shout out, he continues to be an advocate for inclusivity, the recognition of intersectionality and equity for underserved populations in higher education. Yo, I'm so hyped for y'all to meet Femi today. And afterwards, we're going to bring it home and we're going to lift our phenomenal leader, Jane. Jane is the co-executive director for the Puente Project, which is what has brought us all here together today. Jane manages over 100 Puente programs in California, Texas, and Washington, y'all. She began working with the Puente Project in 1995 when she piloted a Puente program at Hayward Unified School District. Beginning in 1999, she worked at the statewide office providing professional development to the program's teachers and counselors. In her role as the co-executive director, she had been instrumental in expanding the high school program, launching national programming, and creating the middle school segment. Jane has studied at Edinburgh University in Scotland, graduated from UC Berkeley with a BA in English Literature, and Master's of Arts in Composition from San Francisco State University. We have three incredible speakers here that are energized and ready to lift their stories and welcome you into this annual 2021 ninth and 10th graders Puente Motivational Conference. With that, Brother Ruber is checking off and passing the mic over to our first speaker, Professor and Vice Chancellor Oscar Dubon. Thank you, Ruben. Me pueden escuchar? Can you all hear me? Yes, is that, a, is that an affirmative? Hello? Hi, can you all hear me? You want to make sure yeah, you can all you, hear bro. me? Yeah, we got you, bro. You, you, you sound real good. You sound like the main actor in a novela. <laughs> That's how fly you sounding right. right now. A telenovela from Univision, huh? I remember those. I get to see them once in a while. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Puentistas. Just really humbled to be here, uh, not just uh, uh, with uh, this amazing uh, panel, uh, speakers, but also with my colleague, Ruben, Mia, and others, um, to be here also with our students, uh, to be in the presence of greatness uh, with uh, Dolores Huerta, um, just humbling, and most importantly, humbling to be able to have a chance to speak with you. You know, as you all know, Puente, Puente means bridge, and uh, we are building a bridge together. We are building a bridge for your education, towards your future. And the most important thing is that that's all our futures. My future is your future, involves your future. I am here to support your success because I know that that's the way our comunidad can continue to be successful. So welcome, so excited. I wish it could be that we're on the Berkeley campus right now, but we're gonna take this anyway, uh, uh, count our blessings, uh, and make sure that uh, even in a remote uh, situation that we're still bringing the Berkeley spirit and the Berkeley vibe. It's really important and I'm really glad that you are part, you are as Puentistas, you are thinking about your future. You're thinking about your education for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones, for your community. And that's what it's all about. At Berkeley, we're also doing that. We're thinking about how is it that Berkeley can be your home a place that you are proud of, a place where you see yourself in your classmates, in the professors who are take your class, in the graduate students who will be also teaching you, in our staff, in our leaders, all of those things. That is really important. And that is a way for us to show our commitment to you as your full self and not just as an amazingly brilliant person that you all are. So I just wanna say that that is a journey. We are moving there forward in that way through numerous initiatives. And I look forward to being able to meet every one of you in person when we have that chance, whether you're coming to Berkeley or whether you choose another outstanding uh, higher ed uh, school uh, as you move forward. I really mentioned that around 
you know, I really hope that Berkeley will be part in part of your plans of applying to college. And I know that the most important thing for all of us is that you make the best decision possible for you. And for some of you, I hope for many of you that will be involved involved Berkeley. And I am here committed, and I know our, my colleagues are committed to support you in your journey to higher ed, no matter where you choose to go, because your future is our future, and we are building that bridge together. There, you're going to meet a number of people here coming coming along uh, from uh, from undergraduate admissions, from ENI, amazing student panelists. Just really mm -hmm. humbled to be here with um, with them, and I just want you to think of us as a resource to you in your journey. We really want to be a, a place and a resource where you, we help you make the best decision for you as you build that bridge. So with that, I just want to welcome you to the virtual Berkeley. Can't wait to see you in person. Looking forward to it. Come and look me up. Don't be surprised if I look you up to make sure that we meet up in person when that time comes. So have a wonderful uh, rest of the program. And I really uh, humbled to be here with you and uh, just really celebrating you, celebrating your journey and celebrating your commitment to your future for all of us. Thank you. And sending it back to uh, my bro, Ruben. Thank you so much, Oscar, for being with us. And thank you for your own legacy and for modeling for so many of our communities that our communities can become professors and vice chancellors and still have a heart that's dedicated to our communities. Always love and lift you for that, brother. With that, I'm going to I'm going to bridge us over and bring up our incredible leader, Jane, to the stage to bring us some wisdom and some power into the space. Jane, the mic is yours. Take it away. Thank you, Ruben. And thank you, UC Berkeley, for hosting our conference today. Buentistas, welcome to your conference. Um, I want you to think about this. We're just starting to come out of a historic year-long pandemic. It has been hard. Your days and lives have been radically upended. And yet, here you are, hundreds of you, almost 1,200, showing up at UC Berkeley. Each one of you belongs in this huge network of students. You're from big cities and small towns all over California. You're joined together by a program, Puente, that you and your family committed to and joined together by strength and hope and importantly, by community. So despite the difficulties of this past year, you're getting yourselves ready for a very promising future. So my message is a shout out to you, Puentistas, that you should celebrate yourselves. You are here you are smart, you are brave, you are talented, you're hopeful. And I hope you all find joy and comfort in knowing that you're part of a movement of young people who listen to and learn from great social justice leaders like Dolores Huerta and from leaders at universities who hope that you one day will be studying at their campus helping to make the changes we need to make the world safer, more inclusive, and more equal. And I'm sure you will join me in also celebrating your Puente teachers and counselors and your families and thanking them for their tremendous work and love and for supporting you on this journey. Puente is proud and grateful to be here with all of you. And remember, once a Puentista, always a Puentista. Enjoy the conference. Oh, back to you, Ruben. That was beautiful. Jane, you always give me the feels and the chills and the vibes. Thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you for continuing your commitment for the Puente community. Big shout out to you and big, big gratitude. All right, y'all. So now we're going to be transitioning to something that is an annual tradition in our motivational conference, which is the legendary Puente Roll Call. So we have a video prepared where every single one of your high schools are about to get a shout out. Now, because this is going to be a video that we prepared for you all, as your high school comes about, we want you to be ready to celebrate each other 
and to acknowledge yourselves as being here in this community of high schools from all over. So we're going to queue up the video for you all. We're going to hit play, get ready for some music and some hype and some vibes. And when you see your high school, give yourselves a shout out, celebrate each other, lift yourselves up here so that we can start with some hype and make sure that everyone knows that we thought about you and that we're excited to have you with us. So if I can ask the team to queue up the our video for folks and we're going to kick it off in three, two and one. No tengo papeles para trabajar Señor presidente, pregunto ¿Por qué matan al moreno con piel de café? Si fuera presidente So they can ride to the future, back to the past, go to the store, get some chips with no GMO. Cause my folks, we got a right to know. And if you don't know, now you know. Me gusta la lima, me gusta el limón, pero no me gusta tanta corrupción.
beautiful, beautiful. Thank y'all so, so much for for acknowledging yourselves celebrating yourselves as you can see we are a vast community here together in this annual 2021 puente motivational conference this is a community of ninth and 10th grade graders that has come along and now y'all i have the huge huge honor to transition to our keynote speaker for today today's keynote speaker is a world renowned leader and i have the honor of starting off by sharing with you all a little bit about who dolores huerta is dolores huerta is founder and president of the dolores huerta foundation she co-founded the united farm workers of america with cesar chavez dolores huerta is a civil rights activist and community organizer she has worked for labor rights and social justice for over 50 years, five, zero, cincuenta, just to make sure you know what I'm talking about here. In 1962, she and Cesar Chavez founded the United Farm Workers Union. She served as vice president and played a critical role in many of the union's accomplishments for four decades. In 2002, she received the Puffin and Nation 100,000 prize for creative citizenship, which she used to establish the Dolores Huerta Foundation, DHF. DHF is connecting groundbreaking community-based organizing to state and national movements to register and educate voters, advocate for education reform, bring about infrastructure improvements in low-income communities, advocate for greater equality for the LGBT plus community, and create strong leadership development. She has received numerous awards, among them the Eleanor Roosevelt Human Rights Award from President Clinton in 1998. In 2012, President Obama bestowed Dolores with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor in the United States, Y'all, please give it up. Please be ready. Please be energized. Please be excited to welcome our keynote speaker for our 2021 Puente Motivational Conference, Dolores Huerta. Thank you very much, Ruben. And uh, I am so happy to be here with all the Puentistas celebrating uh, this wonderful celebration. And I know that right now we're doing it virtually, but uh, pretty soon we'll all be able to get together in person, hopefully by next year when we all get vaccinated, okay? <laughs> and so that's really important that we get out there and we make sure that all of our families get vaccinated also so that we can get rid of this uh, COVID-19, uh, this pandemic, and uh, we can come back to seeing each other in person and in real time. And I know that this has been really a hard time for so many of us. And uh, but we also have to, you know, keep upbeat, keep the spirits up there because uh, we are strong people. The Puentistas are strong people. Uh, not only uh, are we on the bridge, but we also make the bridge, okay? We are the people that hold up the bridge. And I know uh, Puente is such an important organization. I want to thank you for inviting me. One of my own daughters, uh, who became a teacher, by the way, was part of the Puente program. And we know that if it were not for Puente, that so many, especially uh, economically disadvantaged students uh, would not have a chance to go forward. And so we are so grateful to the founders of the Puente program and the fact that it is continuing uh, till today and that all of you are part of it. And you know, when we think of the word Puente, we know what it means, it means a bridge. As, as Puente was founded, it actually meant a bridge to higher education. But I want to use that word puente in another way today. Uh, and uh, this last week, we were celebrating John Lewis. And as you all know, John Lewis was one of the people that bar marched with Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, he crossed uh, this bridge uh, there down there in Alabama. Uh, it was called the Edmunds Pettus Bridge. And they were celebrating uh, that crossing of his bridge. They, have named, they want to name the bridge after him. But every year they have uh, a jubilee. And they just had one this year. And if you want to look it up on, on your internet, it's called Selma Jubilee. And they retell the story of John Lewis crossing that bridge. And he, when he was crossing that bridge, he was beaten up. <clears throat> but, but he, and he was very young, just like you, 
the people in, in, in this conference today. But he never gave up. Although he was beaten up very brutally, he continued. He continued organizing. Eventually, he became a congressman. And the words that he is known for is good trouble. Good trouble. Get out there. Make some trouble, as long as it's good trouble and you do it in an unviolent way. So John Lewis was marching across that bridge because he was fighting for voting rights for black folk in, in the South. And it's kind of interesting because we know that many states uh, in the South, states like Texas, for instance, where we have a lot of Latinos that live in the state of Texas, and uh, trying to take away their voting rights, trying to suppress the vote. So uh, I'm going to ask all of you to join me and many others to say, we're not going to let you get away with that. And one way that we can stop all of those southern states and some in the Midwest is from taking away people's right to vote is by supporting a, a real another voting bill. But this one is in the U.S. Congress and it's called H.R. 1 and it's named after John Lewis. So it, it is like the, the People Power Act of Voting. So I'm, I want to ask all of you as we have, have this conversation to join me and sending an email uh, to your senators and say we've got to pass this John Lewis voting rights bill. Because it, it, and the people that are being targeted by these voting uh, bills that the want to take away people's rights to vote is of course us, people of color. They're the ones that they're going after. They want to take away and suppress our right to vote. So we're not going to let them get away with that. And we know that there are puentes uh, that uh, we know about. Uh, there's a puente in San Isidro. There's a puente in uh, El Paso, Texas. And all along the Mexican border, there are puentes, there are bridges. And, and unfortunately, uh, on our side of the United States, we are trying to keep people, trying to keep people out. Okay? Well... The other thing that we can do as we do our activism as La Puente, as, excuse me, as Puente students have to be, they have to be activists because the students that go through the Puente program are not just any ordinary students. They are students that are activists. And so the other bill that we have to work on is immigration reform because, you know, we have not had an immigration reform in the United States since 1986. And I was very fortunate to have been able to work on that bill. And we were able to get a few million people uh, got their residency status and then eventually could become citizens in 1986. And maybe some of you were the beneficiaries of that law uh, that were able to use, uh, take advantage of that, or maybe somebody that you know, somebody in your family. Well, we have that chance again because President Biden has introduced a bill on immigration reform. But it's not going to be easy to pass it, so we're going to have to work very, very hard uh, to also work on immigration reform. And I want to ask all of you to help us do that also. Hey, and we're also celebrating, uh, we're celebrating International Women's Day, and we're celebrating Women's, uh, the month of March is celebrated for women. And guess what? There's another bill in the Congress that we can work on, and that bill is for Equal Rights Amendment, Equal Rights for Women. Hey, isn't that something we should have had a long time ago? Are you, all you puentistas out there? That, yeah, one would think that that would have already happened. Well, unfortunately, it has not, because it is uh, something that has to be uh, ratified in the United Nations of the world, and we are one of the few countries, uh, the United States of America, that has not ratified that equal rights for women. But is it gonna be in the, in, the, in the US Congress and that is something else that we can send an email because you know we can think of our computers as being a power source. But we can send all of these letters to our congressperson and we can do it right there from wherever we're sitting at with our own computers. But ahora es cuando, the time is now, that we all have to take action uh, to pass some of this important legislation in the US Congress. And I know I don't have to tell the puentistas out there that voting is so important. And I know we have done a lot of marching, you know, for, for brown and black lives that matter, to end gun violence on the women's marches, but we've got to take all of those marches to the ballot box. 
And the other thing is, well, you know, we, we talk about voting, but voting is not enough, is that we have to talk about advocacy. And advocacy means that, that what I'm asking you to do is to send these emails uh, to your, your congressmen and your senators. And by the way, if you know people in other states, get them to also send emails also. It's really, really important. It just takes a few minutes. Because that way, the things that we are working very hard for, like immigration reform, uh, again, equal rights for women, yeah, uh, to make sure we, everybody has the right to vote throughout the United States. Uh, these are the things that we're working for, but we have to make sure that we can get them. And it's not going to happen unless we do the actions uh, to make them happen. I, I saw Michael Moore on Broadway, and he said this. When we wake up in the morning, we wash our face, we brush our teeth, and then we call our congressman. And so that's what I'm asking all the Puentistas to do, because the this bridge that you are walking on, like the one that John Lewis walked on, you know what? It's a bridge to the future. It's a bridge to the future, and all of us coming on that bridge and walking together, we could create that future that we need. And we could keep fighting for uh, the kind of laws that we need, but also working in the future because we definitely want to work for free college education for everybody in the, in the United States. And some people say, hey, well, there's no money for that. Well, you know what? We're the richest country in the world. And if they can have free college education for people in Europe, yes, they have it in Europe. If they can have it in Latin America, some Latin American countries, if they can have it in little tiny Cuba, yes, free education for everybody, then there's no reason why we can't have it in the United States, along, by the way, with free health care. These are things that we can make happen. So I want to invite all the Puentistas to let's march together on that bridge, follow John Lewis's path, follow Cesar Chavez's path, follow Che Guevara's path. Let's all march together, a marchar hacia el futuro, todos juntos. We're going to march together. We're going to make the changes that we need to make in our country, in our educational system, so we can end the racism, the misogyny, the sexism against women, homophobia in our country. All work together uh, to create, uh, a, a, we might say, a green environment and stop the global warming. We can do all of this together because puentistas are powerful. Puentistas are united, y, y todos juntos, all of us together, we can create a better future. And of course, a great part of that better future has to be through education. So the bridge to education, the puente, the bridge to the future, the puente a futuro, todos juntos vamos a llegar. Muchas gracias. Si se puede, have a great conference. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, Dolores. Un honor, un amor, un poderísimo, este, just incredible quality time with you every time. Thank you so much for being here with us. I, you always give me full body chills and I'm ready to go march, take over, pass massive bills and reimagine the world. So thank you so much for being here with us here. I wish we were all together because when you're in a room and you light us all up, it's like instant like thunderous applauses and folks getting ready to have a party and bring some justice to the world. So now let me bridge us into the next portion. The next portion is going to be a special one to everyone that's here with us. We have four incredible high school students who were selected to ask a question to Dolores directly. It's my honor to introduce you all to Eric from Everett Alvarez High School, Ashley from Pasadena High School, Eunice from Poly High School and Jalen from Whittier High School. The way that we're going to flow through this uh, conversation is each one of them will have an opportunity to ask a question. I'm going to repeat the question to make sure that everybody heard it fully. And then Dolores is going to respond. Each one of them has a question to ask and will flow through the conversation. So with that said, Brother Eric, I'm going to pass you the mic for your question. I'll repeat it, and then Dolores will get an opportunity to answer your question. Go ahead. Thank you. 
Um, I wanted to ask, why is it important to have the oppressed state their needs rather than having other people speak on their behalf? Oof. Okay, we're no warm ups here. We're just going straight to power <laughs> questions. I love that. So the question for everyone is, why is it important to have the oppressed declare their needs rather than having other people speak on their behalf? That's powerful, brother. Thank you so much. Dolores passing you the mic. Well, people who are oppressed, they know what their needs are. They know what their feelings are. They have to share them uh, with whomever they're sending this message to, and nobody can do it as well as they. So, yes, we have to reclaim our voices, insist that we are the ones that can speak for our own, for our own selves and for our own needs. And not only that, but the people that are oppressed are the only ones that know the solutions that they need. They know what, what needs to be fixed, and they're the ones that have to enunciate it and tell the world, okay? Because this is, the, the people may be poor, but they have power. And uh, the, the way that they use their power is by finding their voices and uh, expressing uh, to everyone uh, what the solutions uh, that they need to fix the problems that they have. Thank you, Eric. That's phenomenal. Thank you so much, Dolores. And thank you, Eric, for kicking us off here. I'm going to pass the mic over to Ashley. Ashley, passing you the mic for your question. I'll repeat it, and then Dolores will take the answer. My question is, um, what do you struggle most when forming the National Farm Workers Association and how you overcame these challenges? Oh, excellent. We're going to the farm workers uh, movement. So Dolores, one more time, just for our community here that's with us. What did you struggle most with when forming the National Farm Workers Association? And how did you overcome those challenges? Well, number one, with the farm workers, uh, uh, what we had to do is get them to overcome their fear. Uh, because they knew that they were working in terrible conditions, didn't have toilets in the fields for, for the women or the, or the men even, uh, not getting relief periods, uh, not being uh, living in poverty, uh, but they were afraid. So once we could get them to overcome their fear, and then they could go on marches and strikes and boycotts and everything that they needed to do, that was the number one. Of course, the other challenge uh, that we still have is the racism uh, that exists uh, in the agricultural industry and, of course, everywhere else, as we know. So for the farm workers, it's just to get them to overcome their fears so they could stand up for themselves. Uh, with the growers, uh, well, we had to hit them in the pocketbook, and that's what we did with the grape boycott when we got 17 million Americans not to eat grapes. And when they started feeling el dolor en las bolsas, <laughs> then they sat down to negotiate with the workers and then gave them unemployment insurance, gave them the right to organize into a union, got the toilets in the fields and cold drinking water. So, uh, you know, and so we have to fight for our rights. And that's one thing, of course, that the farm workers learned and they did it. Powerful. So, oh, so powerful. Thank you so much for that uh, question, Ashley, and thank you, Dolores, for your wisdom. We're going to pass the mic over to Eunice. Eunice, the mic is yours. Ask your question. I'll repeat it for the community, and then Dolores will answer. Thank you very much. Um, hola, Señora Huerta. Um, my question to you is, what advice did Cesar Chavez give to you that you could give to us? Beautiful. So one more time for our community. What advice did Cesar Chavez give to Dolores? that Dolores can share with us today. Take it away, Dolores. Well, I think that one of the biggest things, and of course I was also in that space when I met Cesar because I had read all about Mahatma Gandhi and about uh, working with nonviolence. And this was very important because in the 60s, uh, there were a lot of groups, even Latino groups, that were advocating that we use violence and uh, get a Molotov cocktail and throw it at a store and uh, threaten people, intimidate people. Um, and we, from the very beginning, uh, Cesar and myself decided that when we started the union, we were got, not going to use any kind of violence. And uh, and even uh, we had five people killed. We had people that were, were beaten up, uh, people who had their homes set on fire, et cetera. We never turned to violence. And that is really important as you go forward. And we're at this critical moment in our in our lives and in our society when we know a lot of changes are going to happen. And you're going to be part of making those changes, by the way. 
that we always stick to the issue of nonviolence because this is a way that we can win. Uh, the other great advice that Cesar uh, gave all of us is don't quit, okay? Uh, this, this march and this struggle for justice, it's a long one. Uh, we're going to see some changes right now. Some of them are cosmetic, but we know that we have to do the structural changes in our society to get rid of the racism and the sexism, the misogyny, the homophobia that I was talking about. So we have to be a patient and not give up when things, things don't go our way, uh, because if we stick to the struggle, uh, we're going to win eventually. And when I look back on my life and I can see how things were when I was your age, and I have seen the changes that have been made, but we know that we still may have to make a lot of changes. And I want to say also to all of you in your schools, uh, in your schools where you're at, in your high schools or your colleges, make sure that they have ethnic studies, that they teach about our lives, our history of the United States, which is the U.S. history. The, the history of people of color, the history of working people, and the and women's history also. Uh, so we can, uh, again, start uh, erasing the ignorance that exists with all of those racist people out there. Let's go. I love that. And Dolores, thank you so much for always lifting to folks that you were that you were you were a co-creator and that you were a co-leader with Cesar, because I think it's important for folks to lift to know that Dolores was somebody that was bringing vision and direction and leadership to the movement. Um, and that needs to be celebrated more and more. So I appreciate that. Thank you both for that conversation. I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic over to Jalen from Whittier High School. Jalen, passing you the mic for your question. I'll repeat it to the community and pass it to Dolores to answer. Thank you. My question is, what do you think is the biggest factor in newer generations not being as culturally connected to their roots? And how much did you stress that when raising children of your own? Well, we're not, you know, the reason that a lot of young people are not connected to their, uh, to their culture is because it's not being taught. And that's one of the things that we have to insist upon. And not only that our cultures, but the cultures of other uh, of, of other people be, uh, are, should be taught. Now, I learned to eat with chopsticks when I was like nine years old because my best friend was Chinese. And uh, so that's very, very important that we reach out and learn about other people's cultures. But yes, and, and we have to really fight for our indigenous culture because a lot of us, we come from, in fact, everybody comes from indigenous roots. But sometimes that, that gets lost in the shuffle. And we are taught a Western culture, European culture, and not the culture of, of, our, of our own roots, which we know are, are pretty amazing. Beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, Jalen, for that question. Now, something that's coming in in the Q&A, y'all, from, from our community is, Dolores, as we're coming into a close here in this panel with our students, a question that folks wanted was, what advice do you have for this generation of ninth and 10th graders? What do you want them to leave from this conversation with you today? Well, as I said before, you are the makers of the future. You are the change makers. Uh, we are right now in this moment uh, where a lot of changes are going to be made and the changes that we want. Uh, we want to stop the fascism in our country, the mass incarcerations that are going on. We want to change our school system so that they can teach our stories, uh, the stories of the Latino people, the stories of of, uh, you know, I like to say to folks, if you look at a map uh, before 1848 and you see a map of the United States of America, a third of it was Mexico. A lot of people don't know that. That it has to be taught that we are the indigenous people of the continent and that the first uh, immigrants to the United States were from Europe, okay? And and we have to get that, that, that message out there to people so that we can make, uh, like I said, erase the racism that exists in our society. So, and especially uh, fighting for, uh, for, uh, the, for, green, for the green environment, because we do know that we have global warming and we want it to be possible for your children and your grandchildren to inherit a planet that they can live in. Uh, we are in danger of having our human species eradicated if we do not stop global warming. And so these are the fights that you have out there. And of course, always remember to fight for equality for women. All right. We know that, that as Coretta Scott King said, that we will never have peace in the world until women take power. And so you have a really full plate of things that you uh, have to engage in. 
but I know that you're up to the task and that we can all uh, make it happen. And I do want to say to all of you, that remember this, that you have the power. And if we were all together, I would ask you that question. And maybe we can end with that. If you just remind me, Ruben. So before we end, I want to just remind people of that. Absolutely. And then uh, the last two questions here, I'm going to read them both to you, Dolores, so that you can answer them in the last uh, here couple minutes that we have. One, one question came in from community, which is, was it difficult for you to not turn violent, to keep true to the path of nonviolence? And how did you do that? That's one question. The other question is, what can we do to deal with the stress that we are experiencing right now? Folks are finding it hard to stay motivated and to fight through the pandemic as ninth and 10th graders having a fully remote high school and also so much going on in the world. What has been helpful for you to stay motivated in your journey of healing and justice and world building in the ways that you describe? Well, we could kind of combine those two questions because uh, when uh, we don't use violence, uh, remember this, that nonviolence and unfortunately in the English language uh, in, uh, or even in Spanish, no violencia, it kind of sounds like it's a very passive thing, but in the Indian language, it's called ahisma and it's a, actually an action word. So when you think about doing things in a nonviolent way, it's really not passive, it's active. And, uh, we have to kind of uh, think about the work that we do. Think of yourselves like as a missionaries, uh, because we're out there trying to heal the world. Like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, racism is a sickness. And so we have to go out there and, and, and get rid of, of the racism. And by the way, we have to kind of remind uh, our people in our Latino community, uh, because we know we have racism in our own community, uh, because sometimes we think that people that are lighter are somewhat better, et cetera. And we know that is white supremacy, but it does come from slavery. And it comes from the colonization, you know, that, that our people suffered uh, because they were actually, the indigenous people were slaves uh, to the conquistadores. And so we have to always challenge that issue of racism and remind them that todos somos iguales, we're all equal. And that the color of the skin is just, a, a racism is a construct uh, <clears throat> to kind of justify slavery. So we have to make sure that we fight against that. And sometimes we have to do it in our own homes. The same thing when it comes to women's reproductive rights. And when it comes to our LGBTQ rights, that we have to kind of instruct and teach our own, sometimes even our own families. And remembering lo que dijo Benito Juarez, uh, el respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz, <clears throat> respecting other rights, people's rights is peace, whatever. Uh, women have to have control over their own bodies, okay? Let, we got to let everybody know that. And, and, and if a woman decides to have an abortion, that is her decision and her right. And who you live with, who you marry, that is also your human right. And so sometimes we have to teach our, our family members about these issues, uh, but never be afraid to speak up. Because when we talk about nonviolence, it's about respecting human rights. It's about doing things with love, with con cariño, and not hating the people that oppress us, but praying for them, as Sasa would say. Pray for those that are, try to educate them if you can, but if you can't, you know, just pray for them. And that way uh, we know that we, we will win eventually because we are on, on the right side and we do things through nonviolence. And I'm not sure if I answered the whole question because I kind of, that know, was like, great. I, I, I can buy those together. No, okay. that was great. That was great and, and true to form in the only magical and blissful ways that Dolores Huerta could have done that. Can we have a moment and just give a round of applause and snaps for our students who were in conversation with Dolores in today's Q&A with Dolores? Thank you all so much for being willing to be in conversation with Dolores. Your questions were phenomenal. To the community that provided us real-time questions, shout out to you all as we were reading them in real time for Dolores to answer some of those that were coming in. Dolores, thank you for giving us the honor of having you with us today with over, we have over a thousand and one hundred folks here with us listening to your wisdom, being inspired by you and excited to be energized to make things happen. So I want to celebrate you and thank you. And is there anything else that you want to share before we wrap up and transition to our next speaker today? 
Well, if anybody can can unmute, I don't know if people can unmute, but if you can, if we were all together, this is the way that I would, would end my, my platica with you. And this is what I'm going to ask you. And maybe to, I'm going to remind you, I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm gonna ask you the question, who's got the power? And I want you to say, we've got the power. And when I say, what kind of power? I want you to say, people power. So maybe we can all do it together. I will lead you. And even though we can't hear each other, we know that we are chanting this important chant. Okay? So I'm going to say, who's got the power? We got the power. What kind of power? People power. People power. <laughs> okay. Let's go. And let's do a big old si se puede, everybody, okay? Se puede o no se puede? Si se puede. All right. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much for inviting me to your conference, and good luck to all of you. God bravo, bless. bravo. God bless you. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, Dolores. Wishing you a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you. All righty, y'all. Thank y'all so much for listening in. Shout out once again to our students who uh, were featured in this portion, to Eric, to Ashley, to Eunice, to Jalen, and of course, to the legendary Dolores Huerta. We're moving on to our next speaker. So excited, so um, happy to introduce EJ Wall. EJ Wall is an artist and educator who recently returned home to the Bay Area. Shout out to the Bay. Before, te uh, before teaching middle school and high school humanities in San Diego, California, the Brave New Voices alum and Bay Area MC Olympics champion. Let me say that one more time. The Bay Area MC Olympics champion studied communication with a minor in Spanish at San Diego State University, where he had opportunities to share stages with several renowned poets and MCs. He also studied abroad and blazed stages in Puebla, Mexico, and Ghana, West Africa. Had the pleasure of opening for artists such as Travis Scott, Casey Veggies, and TDE's Ab Soul, and headlined a show in San Diego as half of the rap duo King's Money Sign. EJ is ecstatic to return to Youth Speaks as a staff member to support young artists and leaders and development of their identities and voices. His work can be found on SoundCloud or at YouTube. Without further ado, here is EJ Wall. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, y'all. What's up, Puentistas? Buenas tardes. Had to uh, take off my little Puente mask that I got in the mail last week. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, thank you, Ruben, for the awesome introduction. Um, and before I even get started, definitely want to send a special shout out to Ms. Melinda Martinez, uh, Ms. Ann Romero, for inviting me, um, offering me the opportunity to be here with y'all. It's such a pleasure. Um, as mentioned, my name is EJ Walls. I'm a hip hop artist, as well as the lead poet mentor for an organization called Youth Speaks. Uh, some of y'all out there may have heard of our work before. Some of y'all maybe have not, but essentially we've been around since 1996. And for the last 25 years, uh, we've been a leading organization in creating spaces for young people like yourselves to find, develop, present, and apply your voice, power, identity, and imagination through um, writing, spoken word, and performing arts. So I actually had the pleasure just a few weeks ago to lead a workshop series um, with a, a wonderful, brilliant group of puentistas, a couple of which were actually featured on the student panel that was so amazing. Um, along with the legendary, legendary Dolores Huerta, who I also want to thank not just for being here today, but your uh, lifetime of organizing work. Uh, I am here to share a quick piece of uh, a quick piece with y'all today. But before I do, I just want to uplift um, once again what Senora Huerta said and shared um, and that we all have a voice worth using and a story worth sharing, right? Um, regardless of who we are, where we come from, um, we do have a voice and uh, a voice that we have a responsibility to use. It doesn't show up the same for everybody. For some of us, it's organizing and activism, gathering people, generating people power, knocking on doors, signing petitions, writing emails, making phone calls, holding our uh, elected officials accountable. 
for others of us, sometimes it's through our art and our artistry with what we can create and share with the world um, to pour back into our communities um, in a way that uh, allows us to imagine the type of futures that we want to build. So whatever it is, I just want to urge everybody here to locate within yourselves what is your story what is what is the output of your voice that you would like to lean into and share with the world um and if that has anything to do with writing if that has anything to do with performing if that has anything to do with getting free with self-expression then you might want to tap in with the organization that i work for um which i'll let you know how you can find us in just a minute but um before doing that i'll share this quick piece with y'all <clears throat> So, my papa made sure that his only boy was laced with game. Taught me to see the big picture and think outside the frame. My mama wanted me to be well-rounded, she implored. I seek every single opportunity to explore. My sisters told me I got a talent I can't ignore. Older nephew helped unlock it, been writing since like 04. My grandparents helped raise me, only knew three of the four. I grew up honoring my elders, but there's generations more. I'm sending thanks to the ancestors I never even knew, giving guidance while we blaze new trails, walking in their shoes. Know it's power in our hue. They try to beat us black and blue. I'm finding freedom on a stage and seeking solace in a booth. So what's the use? We gonna tell the truth and live to see the proof. Survive the terror these cowards inflicting upon the youth. Splitting families up and acting like that's just normal to do? No, I'm confused. This is one battle we didn't get to choose. See, even textbooks got it twisted, make radicals to be passive. Can't believe everything they've been telling us in these classes. Like my history begins stranded on ships and picking cotton. No, I can't let our magnificent kingdoms go forgotten. I was born in the middle of July. Picture diving in a pool on a hot day in the summertime. Mama always told me I'm the twinkle in her eye. My pops named me Sin Q, so this fight comes from inside. A black and brown boy spread his wings and learned to fly. Know the grass ain't greener if you're the only one on the other side. Make sure when you level up, you lift as you climb. I look around sometimes and just can't help but wonder why. Why on a planet full of water there's people dying of thirst? And the ones who tell the truth often end up dying first. Now see, we just trying to stay hydrated, more joyful, less jaded. Elevate about this matrix and make peace with Mother Earth. And that's the word. Indeed, that is my word for you all. Like I said before, we all have a voice to use. It's all just a matter of finding it and being able to share it with the rest of the world. Um, if you enjoyed that, I appreciate you. Definitely wish that we could all be gathered in person um, so that I could exchange energy with you all. But um, knowing that this time that we're living in, I just appreciate y'all for making time and coming through. If you want to know more about Youth Speaks, the work that we do, or you would like to join any of the programs that we have going on, we have a weekly after school writing workshop every single Wednesday that is free and open to anyone ages 13 to 19 years old. Um, we've got a bunch of different opportunities that you can tap in with. And we also have an under 21 open mic on the first Friday of every month. So if you come through to the writing workshops and you're writing stuff that you enjoy and you want other people to hear it, you come on through to the open mic and get free on the microphone. You can find out all that information at youthspeaks.org. That's Y-O-U-T-H-S-P-E-A-K-S dot org or find any of our social media platforms at youth speaks um, we're really easy to find and we can't wait to 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 build and share community with y'all so thank you again puentistas congratulations and continue 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 to inspire to fight appreciate you it was amazing brother you got my soul smiling you got my soul energized that was incredible. Give it up for EJ, y'all. Wherever you are, clap it up, snap it up, send them some good vibra, some good vibes. Thank you so much for being here with us, EJ. We're now going to uh, transition and pass the mic to our final speaker of the day before we wrap up and send everyone to our workshops. It's my great honor to introduce to you all one of the bios of the leaders that we started the day with. Femi is now here with us and is ready to share the stage um, here with all of our speakers and with you all. I'm going to pass the mic to Femi to bring us home with his incredible story and powerful words. Take it away, Femi. Yes, um, Ruben, thank you so much. And, and thank you, everybody who is who's joined us today. Puentitas, 
Francisca's good afternoon. Um, before I begin, I just want to thank the organizers and, and recognize the value of the, the partnership with Puente. It is a game changer for us, and it's something that I am incredibly grateful for, the coordinated effort between Puente and the Office of Admission here at Berkeley. All this is possible because of them, and we really value all of you who are speaking today. And, and I had, I've had an opportunity to listen to just these amazing and dynamic presenters, and I'm grateful for every last um, one of them. I also want to thank the parents, the family members, the guardians, the role models, and the mentors who have and will continue to support you all as you strive to be the best versions of yourself. For you students, today is about you, your desires, your interests, however wide or narrow they are. However you see your future, today is a great day to start owning it. Whatever path you forge, we want you to bring your unique life experiences to a community that sees you, that hears you, and amplifies your voice. The University of California is that place that will see you, that will hear you, that will enable you to lift your voice up loud and strong. Of course, I'm going to encourage everyone here to be considering UC Berkeley in their future. I also recognize that you will all have many options beyond Berkeley and you should explore them fully. Berkeley is a part of the University of California system of nine undergraduate campuses. And while many of these institutions may be familiar to us all, that should not diminish the fact that all of our campuses are among some of the best public schools in the world. To all of you students, your future is bright. Your future is expansive and boundless, but most importantly, your future is what you make of it. Throughout your time today, I encourage you all to approach what you hear with a sense of inquiry. Ask the questions that will help you understand or open your mind to new ideas, perspectives, and concepts. Um, before I go, I wanna leave you with a quote. Harriet Tubman said, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars and change the world. There's no doubt in my mind that the world still needs to be changed. And it's clear that young people will be the ones that will bring that change for us all. You all are built for this moment. It is truly my hope that in the future, you will, we will be welcoming you all as golden bears. And I wanna thank you all for being here. Enjoy the conference and go bears. I'll now kick it back to Ruben. Thank you so much, brother. Again, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for navigating these uh, pandemic times and the impacts on technologies and everything that's happening. Femi, you're absolutely incredible. Thank you for being a light that's leading us to a better future. And thank you for igniting that path for all of our ninth and 10th graders that are here for our annual conference. All right, y'all, those have been all of our phenomenal speakers. We just want you to feel the love, the affirmations, and for you all to know that there are so many people that are thinking about you, preparing these colleges and universities for you, and that we believe in you and in your journey. We've now reached the point where we're going to be transitioning to our workshops. And I want to give you all some very clear instructions here. We have an incredible set of gifts for a raffle. And the raffle requires that you attend a workshop fully. Only those that attend a workshop and stay for the duration of the workshop will be participants of the raffle and be able to take these prizes home. But for now, I want to make sure that you all know that on behalf of everybody in the Puente family, on behalf of all of our speakers from different generations of leadership, that we're all here with you. We share our love and our belief with you. We're going to send you off to these workshops. You're going to see that on the left top corner, you can click on the landing page for Platform Q, and then you'll see the list of workshops for you to attend. Once you attend those workshops and you, you attend the entire workshop, we'll collect those names that attended the full workshop. We're going to do a raffle and we'll make sure to send those gifts up. One last time, I'm going to give it up and give a shout out to everybody from Puente who made this happen. Huge shout out to all of our speakers that gathered today to share their love and wisdom to you all. Shout out to you all and anybody that's listening to us with you. So much love and so much appreciation for you each. Please click on the top left hand platform Q button, head to your workshops and get ready for this incredible learning experience. Thank you all so much. Celebrating y'all. This was the opening of the 2021 annual 9th and 10th grade Puente Motivational Conference. Take care y'all.
Peace.